All right, we're going to get started. So thank you for uh, joining us here today um, for our webinar, How to Get Ready for Google Mobile SEO. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. I know we're all uh, bogged down with lots of tasks and uh, things to do, but I think uh, the time here today will be well worth your while. Uh, we have a lot of content planned. We're going to try to get through it in about 30 minutes. Um, but it will probably be more like 35 and then uh, we'll move into some Q&A so uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, so if you don't know me, I'm Krista LaRiviere and I'm the co-founder and CEO here at G-Shift and I recognize lots of names on the call. So uh, hello if I already know you and uh, nice to meet you if I have not yet met you. Um, I have here with me Jeff Riddell. Hello. And Jeff is our Director of Product Strategy, and uh, I'll be going through a bunch of uh, sort of high-level stuff, and then Jeff's going to dive into the software. And so with that, if I can actually make the slides go forward, here's the agenda uh, for today. I'm going to talk about some industry trends. Um, we're going to go through uh, our mobile SEO survey results. Uh, that have some interesting findings. We're going to talk about mobile content marketing. And then, as I mentioned, Jeff's going to dive into the software and talk about uh, on-site on ranking factors, uh, SEO keywords for mobile, uh, and reporting, and then we'll move into Q&A. Right. If you feel like socializing anything that we have uh, to say here today, you can do that using hashtag mobile SEO, and that's at the bottom of, your, uh, uh, the bottom of each slide. So uh, we would appreciate any socializing. Although we, we realize that you actually have to move away from the screen to do that and bring up your Twitter account. But anyway, good stuff. So let's get right in. If you don't know about G-Shift, and there are some new folks on the call, um, G-Shift is a software company. We have a, a SaaS platform that's all about SEO, social, and content. And we collect all kinds of data every single day at the content level for any web presence that we're tracking. And we collect this data from the search engines and from the social channels. And we've been doing this for a long time. We've been around since 2009, and we uh, track thousands and thousands and thousands of web presences for thousands of users in about 24 different countries and all kinds of different languages. And we're really all about data. I'm a big believer that you need really great data to make decisions about what to do next for your marketing strategy, whether it's SEO social, or content marketing and those things just uh, happen to live happily together. Um, so lots of data to uh, drive decision making. And we have uh, really great white label reporting for, for agencies. And uh, one of our main value propositions is that all of your SEO data and social data is in one place. But that's enough of that. Let's talk about why we're really here. And uh, the reason why we're really here is because of this April 21st deadline. Um, and so back in back around the end of February, Google came out and said this, starting April 21st, we will be expanding our use of mobile friendliness as a ranking signal. This change will affect mobile searches in all languages worldwide and will have a significant impact on our search results. Consequently, users will find it easier to get relevant, high quality search results that are optimized for their devices. Um, this is a really big statement, and I know when I heard it, I thought right away, wow, what does that mean for G-Shift? What does that mean for the discoverability of our brand in organic search after April the 21st? And I think that that's why you guys are on the phone here today or on the webinar here today to find out what it really does mean and what you can do about it. And so what does it really mean? <laughs> and this is uh, Matt Cutts from Google, and we all love Matt Cutts, uh, even though he's still on a leave of absence. And the answer is, we don't know. We actually don't know what it's going to mean. Um, you know, Google has, uh, they're always optimizing and uh, updating their algorithm to make sure that the, the most relevant content is being discovered at the right time by the searcher. But we really never know how impactful that algorithm change is going to be and what it's going to mean for our own web presence as well as our competitors. But what we can do is learn here today, understand how to interpret some data and how to take the next best steps to make sure that we're doing the right things, okay? And so what does this really mean for SEO? And you really need to start thinking about the concept of mobile SEO. You need to start thinking about the concept of mobile content marketing. You need to think about the, di the differences in the discoverability of your keywords, your content and your brand when somebody searches for you from a mobile device compared to a desktop device. 
and you need to understand those differences through data. And we'll be showing you some examples of that. If you're an agency on the phone, I think this algorithm change is an opportunity uh, for you to go to your clients and serve them with additional services. And if you're a brand on the uh, webinar here today, I think that this uh, algorithm change can be a competitive opportunity for you. If your competitors are not paying attention to this and you are, and you're doing the right things for your web presence as it relates to being discovered on a mobile device, they may very well disappear completely from uh, organic search while you um, accelerate an organic search. So we need to think about it from those perspectives. So let's take a look at some industry trends and really how we got here today. And so first, a history lesson. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes uh, from Nikola Tesla, and he said this about 106 years ago. It will soon be possible to transmit wireless messages around the world so simply that any individual can carry and operate his own or her own apparatus. And so I think it was very insightful that he said that. It took us 106 years uh, to get to this point, but um, we got to it. And this was a... This was a um, uh, data that was put out by GSM Association back in October of 2014, and they've been tracking the number of mobile devices that there are in the world, and, and they were predicting that, yeah, the number of mobile devices will equal the number of people at some point in time, and that apparently happened around the first week of October in 2014. So there's a lot of devices out there. Um, most people have two or three, and it's the reason why Google is making these changes here today, because most people are trying to interact with our web presences from a mobile device. And really, this is uh, no surprise either for a lot of marketers. This was uh, an Adobe e-consultancy study. Uh, they put out a digital trends report every year. And they went out and they asked uh, a couple thousand uh, marketers in the United States, which, which areas are you going to be experimenting most heavily in this coming year, being 2015? And this is the word cloud that, that came back. So everything that we're talking about here today, mobile, content, social, SEO, it's all there. So we, we knew that this was coming. And then I like this. This is a Sempo study from their, uh, their digital report. And I always have to give a, a plug for Sempo, Search Engine Marketing Professionals Organization. And I am on the board of directors of it. And it's a great nonprofit association for search marketers. They put a lot, out a lot of great data. And you know, which of the following activities does your organization uh, manage on behalf of clients? and uh, or perform themselves and we see search engine optimization right at the top of the list and uh, not uh, not that it should be at the bottom but mobile marketing is definitely there and these things really really need to come together and that is happening and so for Sempo's uh, second study uh, second slide here for their study you know to what degree are your search engine optimization efforts integrated with the following digital marketing disciplines and I just want to draw your attention to the fact that yeah SEO in the first pillar is very much integrated with content marketing and then more towards the middle very much integrated with mobile marketing as it should be and so you know, SEO has really, really changed over the years and uh, Google continues to surprise us with algorithm updates. And I think we can't get really too caught up in their algorithm updates. And when I think about SEO and the definition, and this is a definition that I came up with, and I think if we keep it in mind as digital marketers, then we don't have to worry so much about the algorithm changes. And SEO is really about the long-term process of enhancing both the brand's web presence asset and the opportunity for discoverability in search and social throughout your prospects buying cycle and now across any device. And so you really need to be found, you need to invest the time over time um, and it is a long-term process and we need to think about the discoverability of your content keywords and brand across any device. Um, and I think that that's a cornerstone to all of this. And so I wanna get into the uh, mobile SEO survey results and so, we got really curious when uh, Google announced this and we put out a survey and we ran that survey from March 25th to April 2nd and we had responses from 293 digital marketers and those were across you know many different sectors including retail, travel, automotive, B2B, B2C and it's important to note that 65% of the participants were indeed senior, senior level marketers and decision makers and so we wanted to share some of those results here today and hopefully you can identify yourself in some of these and or identify some opportunities. And so the first question that we asked was, do you think your website is currently mobile friendly? And approximately 70% of the respondents think that their, their website was indeed mobile friendly. And I thought, well, that was really good. And so we actually started to check some of them. 
And well, they're really not mobile friendly. Um, and so the key message here is please test to see if your website is mobile friendly. And so I have to put myself uh, out on the line here and I did the exact same thing for G-Shift. I was like, well, I'm going to test G-Shift's website on a mobile device. And so for those of you uh, on the call who know me, yes, I use a BlackBerry and yes, I get made fun of often for using it. And so I thought I would throw that in here. And so here's G-Shift's website. Here's our homepage on my BlackBerry. And I am very unhappy to report that it sucks. <laughs> and so even G-Shift has work to do. And so yes, we have a responsive site. And yes, you may have a responsive site, but is it mobile friendly? Is it mobile usable? And so this is what you get when you uh, see the G-Shift site uh, from a mobile device and this wonderful BlackBerry. And, and so, you know, you can click on support, you can click on the number, that's great, but there's this big white space, right? And so then this is, if I scroll down and sort of, this is sort of the second uh, full screen that you would see on a BlackBerry and there's still really nothing. I'm not telling you guys anything important. It's like web present analytics, data driven, whippy, whatever, right? Horrible, horrible, shame on us. And then this is the third screenshot and still, you know, there's just a lot of improvement that we have to do. Um, so really strong message. You may have a, a a mobile a responsive website, but it may not be mobile friendly and mobile usable. And you really, really need to test that. Okay. The second question that we asked uh, the participants was how much of your website traffic comes from mobile? And this didn't surprise us much at all, but about 11 to 50% of traffic is coming from mobile, according to the 293 respondents that we had. And this really um, jives with data that we collect <laughs> on a monthly basis um, across 6,000 websites. We do track them regularly for mobile traffic. And you can see the trend from April 14th to January, or sorry, April 2014 to January 2015, you can see this upward trend. More and more traffic is coming from a mobile device from organic search. And that's, that's really important to understand. So obviously this trend's not going away. Um, third question we asked was, before the survey, were you aware of Google's upcoming algorithm change that will make mobile friendly compliance a ranking factor in mobile device search? And 78% were aware of the algorithm update. Um, but the big question is really, what are you doing about it? What is the plan uh, to take advantage of this and, and really capitalize on it? Question four, do you think your web presence rankings in search and organic traffic will be affected by this change? Almost 50% said yes. And I was sort of sad to see, well, you know, 30% didn't know. And I guess, you know, we really don't know, but, um, you know, so 80%, you could argue that, yeah, there's going to be a change. We just don't know what it is. And I'd actually like to talk to the people who think that they're not going to be affected um, and see what they have to say about that. So if you're on the call and you did answer this question and, and you said, no, I'd like to know more about that. Um, question five, is your company factoring in mobile strategies for SEO and content marketing in order to accommodate mobile search since learning about this change from Google? And 65% uh, are indeed factoring mobile strategies for SEO and content marketing uh, into their uh, strategies. So that was good to see, but I think there's an opportunity to do more, which leads me to the concept of you know, mobile optimized content marketing. And really, what is it and uh, what does it mean? And so I found this stat, and this was a stat uh, put out by Google and Nielsen. And I think it's really important to understand that mobile website visitors have a 9.56% higher bounce rate on average compared to a desktop visitor. And I think we can link that back to, you know, G Shift's website on a mobile device, right? You're going to bounce off that. You have a 9.5%. Uh, likely higher likelihood of bouncing away from that because it's just not usable. Um, so we really need to pay attention to it. And so what can I do about, uh, if I'm a digital marketer, what can I do about mobile optimized content marketing and really what is it? And, and it's really about the usability. So content marketing, so even a blog, what does it look like on my mobile device? Is it usable? Can my customer engage with it? Um, think about content type and video is is something that folks want to engage in more from a mobile device. Um, and so we've started this practice here at G-Shift. When we do write a blog, we oftentimes uh, enhance that blog by producing a vlog, a video blog. And so um, we're getting into that more and more. So doubling up on the content type, text and video. Uh, think about the content style, short form, bite-sized pieces of content. Think about short headlines uh, for your blogs and for all your content. Even email headlines need to be shorter these days, right? 
Um, set up mobile conversions in Google Analytics is a good thing to do. And of course, just some simple testing. Um, test what it's like to engage with your own content on a mobile device. Um, and so two big questions to ask yourself is, you know, is your content discoverable from a mobile device for the keywords that you think it should be? And is your content usable from a mobile device, I think is the bigger question. And so the last question we asked uh, the respondents was, are you using any tools now to specifically track the differences in how you rank on desktop versus mobile? And 56% of respondents are indeed um, using tools that show that difference. And I think that's really great. And I think there's an opportunity to do more. And uh, Jeff is going to talk a little bit more about that. So I am going to hand things over to uh, Mr. Jeff Rudell, and he's going to talk about software, mobile data, and uh, bring us into the software. So over to you, Jeff. Excellent. Thank you very much, Krista. And uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, as Krista mentioned, um, she's really spent, I think, the time to this point discussing the the what, the when, and the why of this Google algorithm update. What I'm going to try and spend my time doing is a little bit more around the how. So we know the algorithm update's coming. Uh, what do we do about it? How do we prepare? Um, and that's both from a a, a mobile SEO or optimization perspective, as well as uh, preparation in terms of understanding where we currently stand uh, from a mobile ranking perspective. So mobile usability, uh, and Chris has, has alluded uh, to this already, uh, but really we're talking about whether or not your website is mobile friendly. Uh, in other words, how does it render on a mobile device like a phone or a tablet? How quickly does your content load? Um, really important that people coming to the site are able to quickly access and, and get to the content and is that content usable? Um, so what is your visitor's mobile experience like? And obviously this is even more important for local businesses where mobile search is, is more and more prevalent. If I'm looking for a local restaurant, looking for a local service or a local business, uh, most likely I'm going to start on my, my mobile device. And so I want to know that uh, my site is, is usable and accessible from that device. Um, so for those people out there that, that think that their site is mobile friendly, there are also some tools available and one in particular that um, we, we'd like to point to and, and some of you uh, certainly may know about this already or may have already been alerted by Google Webmaster Tools is uh, it's just that Google Webmaster Tools has uh, already started the process and this goes back a few months now of alerting the public, uh, alerting website owners, webmasters to the fact that there are sites uh, or their sites in particular have um, mobile uh, problems, mobile friendliness problems are, are not uh, are not designed in a mobile friendly way. And so this is an example of, uh, of a warning you will have received. Uh, you may have received it by email and or when you log into your Google Webmaster Tools account, there's a, a, an area dedicated now to mobile usability. And uh, there you'll see that they've really got this three-step process of, of addressing and fixing the problems uh, should they occur. One is first off identifying the problematic pages and you'll see that there's a basically a button you can click and it'll show you specifically which pages are having the issues and what those issues are. Um, they provide a lot of really great uh, information around um, mobile friendly design and they've uh, another button there where you can click through to find the uh, the guidelines that they're using to determine mobile friendliness. And then finally, and, and most obviously, it's a matter of going in and fixing those mobile usability issues, uh, at which point you can actually resubmit your site to uh, to Google to say, hey, I've you know listened to your advice. Um, I've made the uh, the required changes. Um, please check again and let me know if uh, if everything is uh, is copacetic if i've if I've met the the requirements and my site is indeed mobile friendly. Again, there, there may be consideration above and beyond mobile friendliness to mobile usable, but at a, at a base, uh, from a base perspective, meeting Google uh, Webmaster Tool requirements is certainly something everybody should be, uh, should be paying attention to, particularly from the, uh, the algorithm update perspective. Here's just a second screen uh, example of how, in this case, for this particular site, there were 250 pages which were identified with errors. Obviously, this uh, the site had quite a few problems, although when it came down to it, it was really just a matter of four specific things, uh, viewport not configured, a small font size, 
the touch elements are too close. In other words, the things that we click on once we're on the mobile site were too close together, so they weren't clickable for all intents and purposes. And the content, likewise, not properly sized to the viewport. viewport. So in all cases, it, we're talking really about the form factor and, and the smaller size of the device, not perhaps uh, you know making the site all that accessible by the uh, the visitor. So the moral of the story here, I think, is really use Google Webmaster Tools. Uh, I might also mention that that we've also uh, integrated Google Webmaster Tools with G Shift um, to pick up on things like these types of warnings, as well as uh, a, a raft of other information around search queries and, and other site errors, diagnostic information that's available for Google Webmaster Tools um, that we think is, is useful to have within the context of, uh, of web presence optimization software. So I want to talk a little bit more about fixing usability issues. We uh, we outlined just the four there, and as mentioned, there's some great resources from uh, from Google. But um, this is just a quick uh, checklist, if you will, of of things to think about or or quick things to check on in terms of the uh, the mobile friendliness of your site. Uh, first off, if you're using a CMS, whether it be WordPress or Drupal or um, the variety of other content management systems that are out there, many of them uh, provide mobile friendly themes and making your site mobile friendly, mobily accessible might be simply a matter of implementing a new theme. Now that might require some some design changes that go along with that, but um, certainly uh, at least getting you 75 to, to 80, 90 percent of the way there might be simply installing a new theme. So that would certainly be the first thing I'd take a look at. Um, alluded to in the uh, error messages that were noted in Google Webmaster Tools, make sure your site fits inside the mobile viewport. And Krista alluded to that on her her uh, her fancy BlackBerry there, where the GShift site didn't render uh, exactly the way that we would uh, we'd like it to. Um, over on the right hand side, you'll see this is actually a screenshot from my Android device. Um, looks a little better than it did on her BlackBerry, so that's. That's a little more heartening. Uh, we still got some work to do because there's still a big white space there. But uh, making sure your site obviously fits within the mobile viewport, that everything um, a user needs to see on your homepage when they first land there uh, on their phone, uh, they're able to, to get to. Um, obviously, making sure the font is legible is another important consideration. If they can't read it, obviously, it's not going to be usable. Uh, making sure those buttons are clickable. Um, you know, these days we're, we're using a couple of thumbs. We want to make sure that uh, that if we've got, you know, larger than average thumbs that we're not clicking on two buttons or three buttons at once. Um, so making those types of uh, those types of usability um, items uh, taken care of and making sure that those buttons are the right size is important. Um, in terms of the load speed of the site, uh, things like minimizing the amount of HTML and, and CSS that's been used, avoiding JavaScript where possible, um, also avoiding heavy images. Um, so on that mobile version of your site where the, the site needs to load into a mobile device, we don't want to have to download a, you know, a two or three meg image. Um, that's just going to slow the site right down and, and pretty much make it inaccessible um, and you know by, by virtue of that unusable. Um, and so where possible using browser caching, someone's been to the page or to the site before that it loads that much quicker when they're coming back that second or third time on their mobile device. And one word of caution, um, because there's there's two trains of thought in terms of going mobile friendly or creating a mobile uh, friendly site. One is to um, to make your existing site responsive um, and or mobile friendly, and the other option is to create a mobile only site. Um, the word of caution I would provide there is if you go mobile only, keep in mind that you're creating a all, for all intents and purposes new site with new content that may in turn need to be re-optimized uh, and or optimized for that first time and indexed for that first time by Google. So it will take some time for that content to get found and for that content to be properly indexed and then ranked by Google. So there may be you know, a lag or some delay if you go the route of creating a mobile only site. Um, so what type of mobile, uh, when we talk about mobile rank data, um, why is it important to to understand where you you rank from a mobile perspective? Well, first off, um, anecdotally, looking at the uh, the six thousand odd sites as Krista mentioned that are in uh, our software, or, or taking a, a, a sort of a tally of a few of those, um, there certainly is a difference already between mobile and desktop rank. Um, you'll see over on the right hand side, we've taken a, a quick snapshot from an existing client site. Um, where some of these keywords, you know, in, in some cases there's little to no variation, while in others 
um, for some keywords like sawmill or sawmill. Sawmill is two words or sawmill. Um, we see anywhere from a three or four place to multi-place difference between a desktop search here on the left and a mobile-based search here on the right. So there already are some differences. We're not at April 21st yet. Um, we think that there probably will be more differences once that deadline hits um, or within time after that deadline. But that's certainly something we want to, uh, to be paying attention to. Is there a difference in, in how we rank or how we're positioned? The other thing to keep in mind from a mobile perspective is that page one on a mobile device is quite different than page one on a desktop. Um, already from a desktop perspective, we've been seeing page one shrink or real estate being taken up by other types of content, whether it be uh, a local local map results, um, you know, Google AdWords uh, content where page one used to mean the first 10 results. Now, sometimes it means the top, the, the first seven or eight results. Um, whereas on a mobile device, and again, thinking of Krista's fancy Blackberry, um, she'd be lucky if she could see three results <laughs> on that little screen. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, you know, on some of the, a larger mobile device, a tablet, you might have five or seven results showing up on the first page. Um, end of the, the day, anything that isn't on page one is that much more invisible. So you want to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, you know, at one point it was great that we're on page one because we're sitting in the number seven, eight or nine position. Not so much when we're considering that on a mobile device. And again, from a, a local perspective, uh, mobile local rank data is crucial for, for local businesses. Um, nobody's likely scrolling or, or going on to page two when they're looking for, you know, the local restaurant or the local business that they want to deal with. Um, the mobile device is all about immediacy. So what you see when you first do that search is likely what you're going to be clicking on or likely who you're calling through to. So I want to talk again a little bit about mobile data specifically in G-Shift and, and what can we offer. Uh, you saw a snippet of it just a moment ago on the previous screen, um, but and I'll jump into the, the software quickly and give you a sense of this as well. Um, but really uh, a few important things, the, the first one being the mobile rank data, so mobile rank versus desktop uh, rank data. Uh, we also provide some, some comparative reporting so you can see those two side by side. Uh, so very important, we certainly recommend that you get a benchmark of where you stand now or sometime before the 21st so that when that date hits, and again, the result or the, the resulting effect of this Google algorithm change may take anywhere from you know weeks to months to be seen the way Google typically does this is they'll roll it out over time. So starting with Google.com and a, you know, a portion of the site's that are found via google.com will be affected and then roll out to you know the others being google.ca or .co.uk or Australia or you know worldwide the other the other variations of google so important when you can to get at least a benchmark of where you are today to see whether or not you're you are or have been affected um, the last thing I'll mention here is, is mobile analytics. So having driven traffic to the site on a mobile device you probably want to start to understand how that mobile traffic is performing versus desktop or tablet traffic. In the eyes of Google, tablet traffic actually isn't mobile. They consider that as a separate source. So over here on the right, you'll see that we have a, a fairly uh, uh, distinct breakdown of device sessions, bounce rates, pages per session, average sessions, and conversion-related information. So we can start to understand where's our most valuable traffic coming from. Um, and maybe we might you know, quickly under realize that we don't have great engagement or visibility on a mobile device, and it might very well be again because our site's not all that mobily usable. Um, so it is showing up in the search results. We are getting some traffic, but people aren't staying very long. Again, that might you know lead us to uh, make some decisions about re, uh, revisiting our, our mobile usability. So let me jump from here just quickly into the software. So as I mentioned, I give you a quick sense of where you can find this data within G Shift. And again, I've logged into the uh, the same client site here. Um, we're up in our managed search engines area, and this is just to give you a sense of the variety of search engines. Um, this is a global client, so they have a number of different search engines they're following their desired keywords in. And you'll notice specifically we have one of those search engines being Google.ca or Canada in Toronto. 
Um, and then more specifically, and we're using this primarily for demo purposes, um, because this, this client doesn't really have a local uh, interest, but they do want to understand how their content's rendering or how their, uh, their site's performing on a mobile device, uh, Google US, specifically in St. Louis and specifically on a mobile device. So that gives us, and we can add as many different variations of, uh, of locations and or mobile visibility right down to the, uh, the longitude and latitude um, of where that device might be located. So having established what search engines we want to pay attention to, we can jump into our keywords area. And specifically, I'm going to go to the positions and within positions right now, I'm looking at google.com. So this is effectively desktop traffic, all of the keywords and my current rank and the pages that are ranking for those keywords. But I might also be interested in, or most specifically here today, I'm interested in what does that same rank look like Google US in St. Louis on a mobile device. And here's basically that same set of keywords, the rank, and again, the pages that are, are ranking or being found in those positions for those specific keywords. And from here, one of the things I wanted to point out is that for the most part, again, you know, doing fairly well, this site, um, even on mobile device, but if we scroll down to the bottom, there's a couple of keywords here, down here that aren't doing as well. And maybe I wanna understand, well, not doing well on mobile, but how are they doing from a desktop perspective? For that, I can click on the keyword and that will take me directly into all of the data associated with that keyword, including all of the search engines I'm tracking, along with the one right down here at the bottom, which is that mobile google.com in St. Louis. And you'll see that there, there's quite a bit of a difference when it comes to the term mobile sawmills, where for the most part, I'm doing fairly well in the one or two position, um, but here in Australia and or on a mobile device, don't know if there's any connection there, um, that uh, that the rank is, is sitting quite a bit lower. So that's again, something I wanna pay attention to, not only now, but beyond today, after the or beyond the uh, April 21st deadline, because again, the effect that that algorithm update has might be positive or negative, and that's something else we didn't really allude to. It, there's, or I guess Krista did in terms of the uh, the opportunity. Um, if your competition is uh, either being ignorant or not paying attention to what's happening with the update, you, you might actually see an opportunity. You might see that your your positions or your keyword rankings will improve as opposed to, uh, to potentially uh, falling back. So get that uh, you know, benchmarking done as early as you can so you can understand where you are today versus um, the, the, the date after, after that 21st deadline. And I think that really covers what I wanted to go through. We appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day uh, to listen. We hope you learned one thing or two things. You, you definitely learned that uh, G-Shift's website on Krista's BlackBerry uh, is not very usable. Um, we wish you all the best after April the 21st. And, um, and we will chat with you again in the near future on another webinar. Take care, everybody. Okay, thank you, everyone. Have a great day.